May we have the toy group in the ring, please? Here we go. The Affin Pincher is going to lead the way. And actually, an Affin Pincher was the last uh, toy breed to win Best in Show 2013. 11 times the toy group has won Best in Show. The fun thing, this is a wide, this group, wide variety of appearance. Yes, and we just left a group where it's all about functionality. This group is all about the details. They're companion dogs. They're lap dogs. It's about beauty, eye, coat texture. And Pekingese have the most toy group wins and the most uh, toy group placements. As you said, this is a very interesting group because they're all the different shapes and sizes, but I mean, going from the Italian Greyhound to the Maltese to the Min Pin, we've got so many different dogs. You can find one you love, right? Right, Chris? And she's going to have to, she being our judge for the toy group, Sharon Newcomb. Here's what she had to say about the importance of judging at Westminster and this particular group live at Madison Square Garden. Michael Lefebvre starts us off. She's still taking another look at this side. Affen means monkey in German, and Pincher means terrier. Thus, the Affen Pincher means monkey dog. <laughs> Strall in structure and strong will, they are originally used to rid granaries and kitchens of small rodents. They are intelligent, inquisitive, neat, but shaggy, with a bold personality. This is Affen Pincher, number 11. Of course, Ernesto Lara is handling. You may recognize him from being in the group many times before, and he won Best in Show in 2013 with an Affin Pincher, Banana Joe. And this dog, Sheena, is related. When they say monkey dog, it's all about that face. You get up close, it's almost got a human-like quality to its expression. And even though Ernesto's been here before, it's always exciting when you're back in the group. With Absolutely. The The Brussels Griffon is named for the capital of Belgium where it was first developed. There are two coat types. The rough that is similar to most hard-coated terriers and the smooth like that found in the pug. These little dogs popular here since the turn of the 20th century are devoted and intelligent companions. This is Brussels Griffon, number 17. Here we have Susie Depew. Again, we've seen her in the group ring here many times. This is uh, Olive, who of course is the number one Brussels. And the uh, remember the movie back in uh, 1997, as good as it gets, Jack Nicholson overshadowed somewhat by Jill, a Brussels Griffon. Yeah, and the uh, Brussels Griffon helped him get over his OCD. Uh, <laughs> helped, helped with the uh, fellow actors. <laughs> Quite a personality here. These glamorous little dogs were bred strictly as companions and historically known as comforter spaniels. Favorites in the courts of the English royalty. They are ideal, gentle family pets, bred to be sound and beautiful, happy and eager to please, and make perfect therapy dogs. This is Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, number 42. This breed makes such a wonderful pet. Of course, they've become popular over the years as uh, you know, great pets, but they can also be very good therapy dogs. And, and featured on uh, Sex in the City, Charlotte's dog, Elizabeth yes. Taylor. Yes. <laughs> Very popular in New York City. You know, this is, is, you know, Westminster is a New York event. It's been all week long, and, and these dogs are part of that, you know, element. And Nick here was born in the back seat of his owner's car. Interesting. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's probably in traffic in New York, <laughs> in Manhattan. The origin of the Chihuahua is a mystery with guesses from Mexico to Egypt, Sudan, and Malta. It probably originated in Asia and came to Mexico in very ancient times. It is the smallest of a purebred dogs, clever, gigantic in heart, and possessing terrier characteristics. Two coat varieties, long and smooth, are recognized. This is long-coated Chihuahua, number nine. And again, a Chihuahua has never won Best in Show. Has not, but you know, they're great little show dogs. They're, they have such a unique head shape and yes. eye shape. Yes, you're going to see that over and over with each of these toy breeds, yeah, talking about head, 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 and it's about eye shape, placement, ear set. I like the name Issue. That kind of says a lot <laughs> about the, maybe the personality 
of this long coat chihuahua. And this is the smooth coated chihuahua genetically the same breed. Legend has it that this diminutive dog was introduced in Europe as a result of the voyages of Christopher Columbus. This is smooth coated chihuahua. Number 10. And this particular breed, you popularized, you go back into the 40s and 50s, band leader Xavier Cougar, somewhere Charo is dancing. And then <laughs> they were popular throughout the years, and then more recently in the Legally Blonde films as well. This yes. particular type of yes. I was completely enamored when they showed that shot of the head, and the eye, and the ear. Oh my God, ear. gorgeous expression, beautiful size and set of the ear. Tiffany here is being shown by her okay. uh, right owner. She's owner handled, which we always love to promote. You know, the professionals do a great job, but when an owner handler can be really successful with their dog, it's just fun to watch. You know, we want to encourage everyone to be successful with their dog. A Chinese Crested was admitted to the toy group in 1991. The breed dates back at least to the early 1500s. They appear to have come from China, although Spanish explorers found them in Mexico and South and Central America. The two types, the hairless and powder puff, are judged by the same standard. This is Chinese Crested, number nine. So there is, you study that, that standard for that. That's got to be a challenge. It's it's all about that coat pattern. You know, it's a hairless breed on the body, but it's got the, the head covering, the tail, over the feet. This breed can be very uh, a good fit for somebody with allergies. Yes. So that's something to consider. They're very clean. They're kind of cat-like. Yeah. They also also come as powder puffs, where you know they're, the coat is you know, across the whole body. So you have you have options. Yeah, very trainable, but very distinct way of going, almost horse-like. Yeah, it's just, you know? it looks like a yeah. Small horse. Long favored by royalty, the English toy spaniel is nicknamed the Charlie after its most famous admirers, King Charles I and King Charles II. The English toy is a robust toy spaniel with a distinctive domed head. It is a devoted companion with a charming, merry, and affectionate demeanor. This is English Toy Spaniel number 17, Blenheim and Pist Prince Charles. Now think back to when you were looking at the Cavalier, similar history to the English Toy Spaniel. There was a point in time where choices were made and they branched off. You know, some fanciers went with the Cavalier, some with the English Toy Spaniel. The heads are distinctly different. Andrews here is being Andrew. shown by Pear, who you may recognize this handler. He won the sporting group last year. Yes, with the Sussex. With Bean, yes. that's right. The King Charles and Ruby variety. The original black and tan coloring was said to be the favorite of King Charles I. The Ruby is a self-colored, rich mahogany red. The charming personality and temperament is in a small package, but it is an excellent companion. This is English Toy Spaniel, number 19, Charles and Ruby. You know, it's interesting to think of these breeds and their history. This breed has been around since Elizabethan times there, and they're still great pets today. Absolutely. You this, talk about, you know, the, this being the show of shows, and we're seeing the best of, of, of the best. But if, if you want a pet, you know, family companion plays well with children, it's in your wheelhouse. That's right. And that's why it's great to have people come to the dog show or tune in and learn about the breeds before they select a dog to be part of their family. The Havanese is the national dog of Cuba. His high head carriage, top line rising slightly from withers to rump, the rectangular body and plumed tail carried over the back make the Havanese outline unmistakable. The unique springy gait sets this breed apart from all other breeds. This is Havanese, number 25. I was going to say, this is either uh, Bono, if you're a U2 fan, or Bono, if you go back to Sonny and Cher. Right? <laughs> I think it's is, Bono. This is Bono. Right? <laughs> His show name in the name of love is registered name. Being shown by Taffy McFadden, and you may remember last year, Flynn, the Bichon right. who won, was what? handled by Bill McFadden. So they are a handling duo. But, of course, Bono's 
uh, Havanese, and uh, this is such a fun breed. They have a nice silky coat. It's soft. They're fun-loving. They have a great right temperament. Around. Yeah, and this dog is very typical in the way of going that kind of jaunty gait. And their top line is distinct in that it actually rises from the shoulder up to the rump. You know, right. most breeds are looking for a flat top line. Right. Charles Dickens owned the Havanese. The Italian Greyhound is a Greyhound in miniature. Just His original cool. role was probably both as a hunter of small game and as a companion. He is luxury loving and extremely affectionate, sometimes to the point of neediness. <laughs> Yet being a true hound, he requires exercise and outdoor activities. This is Italian Greyhound, number 18. This breed has long been a, a favorite of royalty. It's always, you know, it really is just elegant and a wonderful companion, so why wouldn't you want that? Yeah, in other parts of the world, they're really considered sighthounds, and actually these little IGs can uh, get out there and run with the best of them, actually. This is Vicky. Being handled by Justin Smithy. So Chris, have you learned a little bit when you watch those sighthounds in, in the hound group, you know, that shape, that top line underline, you're seeing it again here, again. but in a toy version. In a, a smaller, right, so a smaller. Exactly. It's cool. The aristocratic Japanese Chin is one of the oldest of all toy breeds. In 1853, Commodore Perry brought several back from, with him from his trip to Japan. By the end of the 19th century, there were popular dog shows in this country. It is a true companion animal of antiquity style, tradition, and class. This is Japanese Chin, number 10. This is Disney, who is a multiple best in show winner. And you know, there are some breeds that it just seems like it's harder to win a best in show with, yes. and this could be one of them. But to, to ha be a multiple best in show winner, that's that's really an accomplishment. But just looking at the way he goes, I can see him being competitive with some of you know, the bigger dogs, moving beautifully. But what's most important is that head and shape of eye and um, the muzzle. The uh, You can see the white in their eyes, which is just distinct to this breed. Very oriental expression, as they call it. Yes. The Maltese have been known for at least 28 centuries, making it easily one of the older breeds. Throughout much of history, royalty and people of refinement have favored this little dog. They are gentle and affectionate. The sole purpose of this small dog with the long, white, silky, straight hair is to be a companion. This is Maltese, number 16. Here we have Anna, Anna Pavlova, who is uh in the breed or in the group last year. She's a repeat. Okay. Tim Lehman is her owner and breeder and lives in Manhattan. So, so we have that New York connection. This breed is about head and expression, those dark eyes, dark pigment. Yeah. And you saw the judge going over the dog. She was feeling that coat. She wanted that silky coat and it actually has a cool feel to it. That's what tells you that it's actually the correct texture. Our judge, Sharon Newcomb, sorting through the toy group. And she's going to look at this dog on the go around. She's going to look for that dog to cover ground efficiently, but also keep a level top line. We'll continue in the toy group. Toy Manchester, as a breed apart, is a little over 150 years old. This is the toy variety of the Manchester Terrier, named like the larger version for Manchester, England. The toy came to the United States in the larger version and was an immediate hit with people of taste and discrimination. Yeah. This is Toy Manchester Terrier, number 20. The, uh, this toy variety does not exceed 12 pounds. And there's the standard, of course, which is in another group that won't be seen tonight. But uh, the toy variety, of course, is just really a smaller size. Smaller size, version. Yep. Smaller yes. version. Lucia. The markings in this breed are, are distinctive. You look at all the, the black and the tan and where it's located. So when you're judging this breed, you're checking for that. It's also about their shape, their outline, shape instead of their well. ear. And Lucy has been very, very successful. This is her fourth year of being the number one toy Manchester in America. Very distinctive way of going. The miniature pincher is dis distinctly not a bred down version of the Doberman pincher as so many people apparently believe. In fact, this toy is by far the older breed. Minpins are alert, active, fearless, and naturally inquisitive. The Hackney gait, which is a high-stepping, free, and easy gait, is correct for the breed. This is Miniature Pincher, number 17. 
This is Minnie being shown by Kim Calveca, who has actually said that this was the seventh generation of her breeding. Oh, wow. She's been very successful here at the garden in the past. And, and despite the size, it's told that this uh, is, a, is a, an excellent watchdog. Oh, yeah. They, they don't realize their size. <laughs> so the, uh, the bark is uh, a lot louder and bigger than the And, of course, their gate, yeah. speaking of characteristics, See that, that break? Hackney gate. Right where the pastern yep. breaks. Yep. Kind of rear-driven. Papillon is French for butterfly, and the ears on this elegant toy dog resemble wings. This breed was favored by the French monarchy in the 1600s and 1700s. This Royal Spaniel comes in two varieties. The Papillon has erect ears and the Feline, French for moth, has drop ears. This is Papillon, number 10. And Michael Lefebvre, who's done this, what, since 2001, as our ring announcer mentoring the history, mentioning the history, Marie Antoinette was a Papillon admirer, and more recently, Justin Bieber, owning a, a Papillon named Sam, he adopted from a shelter. They're, they're really smart breed. You'll see them in many other dog sports, agility, they're zooming yes. around the course, they're really trainable yes. and very bright. They're an ethereal dog. As you watch the dog go around, there's a lightness about them. Very that elegant. Expression. Very now, elegant. for this exhibitor, actually, Mrs. Newcomb is, is involved in this breed. She has Papillon, so she's going to be looking at this uh, closely. very closely. Uh, that was Mickey. The Pekingese has long been one of the most popular of all toy breeds. His tapering hind corners, massive front end, and mane earn him the name Lion Dog. The standard calls for an unhurried, dignified, and rolling gait, as you can see here tonight. He dates to the 8th century in China, where he was considered sacred. This is Pekingese, number 12. <laughs> wow, there's a lot. You know, Elizabeth Taylor, she had a Pekingese. It loved her Pekingese so much, legend has it, that she chartered a yacht to London so that the dog could join her, because other ways of travel would, would not allow the Pekingese to be with her. Well, that, it, it's a companion dog, and obviously <laughs> she you... wanted her companion <laughs> with her, right? <laughs> And, of course, David Fitzpatrick is on the other end of the lead. You may recognize him. Of course, he's won Best in Show here before in 2012 yes. uh, with Malachi. This is Primrose, of Another course. female. We've had quite a few. Yeah. And hey, watch her go. I was always told Pekingese should look like a goldfish moving through the water. It's a <laughs> smooth. It should be a smooth. It's, it's a roll, but it should be very smooth as it's moving forward. And you it's see that head, that shape of that head? It's like an envelope. Very, very important. Pomeranian is a Nordic spitz breed that takes its name from the German province of Pomerania. They have been bred down from their original 20 to 30 po pound herding and sled pulling ancestors to three to seven pound size today. These spirited and loyal dogs excel in the show ring at companion events and as therapy dogs. This is Pomeranian, number 30. And as you talked about head, obviously, mm -hmm. and the Pomeranian, it's also true that fox-like expression and that personality there this is one of the ultimate toy breeds yeah this breed you want it short back as, as you can get real square outline yeah. that double standoff coat and that foxy expression with little ears this is the smallest variety of poodle a diminutive copy of the miniature and standard poodle never in excess of 10 inches tall the toy should have the same structure, intelligence, attitude, and beauty of the larger members of his family, and the same elegant style in grooming. This is Toy Poodle, number 29. And before we get to the, the poodle, we're talking social media. Boo the Pomeranian, the most popular dog on social media, had over 28 million followers. Unfortunately, three weeks ago, Boo had passed away at the age of 12. But as we listen here live at Madison Square Garden, a roar from the crowd with Cammy, the toy poodle. This is a breed that I actually have owned, bred, and shown, and uh, all three varieties. And I think people make the mistake, you know, seeing all the glamour, the hair, the trim. But these are great companion animals. They're smart. Um, they're active. You can do lots of different activities with them. They that trim so. is actually functional. That's right. That's right. The pug almost certainly originated in China, next appearing in Japan and then Europe in the 16th century. He quickly became the darling of European nobility. Pugs combine a cocky confidence with a friendly, sensitive, and sincere nature. They are especially good with children. 
This is pug number 18. Go. And the name Biggie, notorious P-U-G. <laughs> Of course, Biggie won the toy group last year. Yes. And he was he's a young dog still. I mean, I think he's matured a little. He's filled out. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's had a great year. Yeah, and when you talk about that being filled out, this breed, they use a phrase in their standard called multum and parvum. It's a, you want the most substance you can get in the dog without them becoming cloddy and cumbersome. And, and Doug the Pug, we were talking to King of Pop Culture, dominating social media now, over 12 million followers. The Shih Tzu was originally developed in China's imperial courts by crossing ancient Chinese and Tibetan breeds. Later, the Shih Tzu flourished in England and has now become popular in the States. While a show dog wears the long flowing coat, family pets look charming and are easier to maintain in a variety of short clips. This is Shih Tzu, number seven. Okay. Rocky here being handled by his breeder owner and handler, Luke Ehrite, who has been in this group before and actually done very well. He's known for his Jolie Shih Tzu. Yes. Beautifully That's put down. That a lot of uh, preparation obviously goes into maintaining the coat, growing the coat, and conditioning the coat, making sure the dog's in good physical condition as well under that coat. Yeah, and that, that coat texture again, all these breeds, so important. It's a double coat. You know, when we looked at the Maltese, we talked about a silky coat, a single. This is a double coat. And if you don't want all that coat on your pet, you can always clip it back. Absolutely. <laughs> The Silky Terrier is a toy with the heart of a terrier. The breed originated in Australia and is said to be a cross between the Australian Terrier and the Yorkshire Terrier. The breed was first shown in Australia in 1907, but not in the United States until the early 1950s. This is Silky Terrier, number 11. This is windy, and you know, a lot of people sometimes confuse the Silky with the Yorkie, but once you see them next to each other, you see major differences major. in their length of body and their head shape. How much closer, actually, to the Australian Terrier in, in look and outline, yeah? The color here, this is what's important. See how it's a, that, that steel gray and tan? It's beautiful. Gorgeous. So Chris, what do you think that coat texture should be? Silky Terrier has what kind of a coat? A lovely coat. Silky. <laughs> Silky. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I was watching the gate. The Toy Fox Terrier became a member of the AKC Toy Group in 2003. Bred down from Smooth Fox Terriers, the Toy Fox combines a spirited terrier attitude with a typical affectionate personality of a toy dog. These fun-loving little dogs love human company and make great show dogs, agility dogs, or wonderful pets. This is Toy Fox Terrier, number six. Top of the hour, you're watching the 143rd annual Westminster Kettle Club Dog Show, and it is our pleasure to be live with you from Madison Square Garden on FS1 with Gail miller Beicher, Don Sturz, I'm Chris Myers. Our thanks to the research staff, Catherine Wright, Anna Gracie and Wayne Fiddleman as we are sorting, wrapping up the toy group. We've already had the Dachshund uh, win the Hound group, two of the seven groups. The Yorkshire Terrier traces its roots to the Terriers of Scotland and Northern England. Yorkies are a distinct breed by 1870 and first shown at Westminster in 1877. Today's Yorkie retains the hallmark of the breed, an ideal dark blue silk body coat high head carriage of shaded golden tan, and of course the self-importance of a toy terrier. This is Yorkshire Terrier, number eight. This is Keegan being handled by Diane, Diane Arite, who her husband had the Shih Tzu. So yeah. we're seeing another couple of handlers here. Uh, that's always fun when one wins and one doesn't. Uh, long ride home from the dog show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but Keegan here has had a great year, and he, he got a group three at the Kennel Club of Philadelphia. And is his national specialty winner, which of course is an, always a special win. Correct. We've seen Yorkshire Terriers in uh, movies like Meet, run, the, run. Meet the Fockers, A Fish Called Wanda, Funny Face, The Simpsons. <laughs> A 
All right, now they're all going to come back out, and Mrs. Newcomb's going to take a look and, and start to sort it out in her mind. Let's see if she makes a cut. Now she judges internationally and conducts, ju actually judges uh, education seminars in various mm -hmm. breeds. This is her third assignment here at Westminster. Taking one last look before she makes her cut. Because you had asked me a question of some of the groups who are more difficult to do than others, and I think this is a challenge group because each of these breeds is so distinct in its make and shape. She's pulled out the Brussels Griffon. English Toy. Havanese. Bono. Italian Greyhound. Yeah, Manchester Terrier. Oh, great. Making the cut. Pekingese. Pekingese with David Fitzpatrick. I mean, There's Biggie, the pug. Oh, that gets Biggie. a little crowd favorite. <laughs> and the Yorkshire Terrier, Keegan. Look at Biggie working it there, staying in the. <laughs> so now the other handlers will, will go back behind the boxes, give everyone a little more room. I'm always amazed how. I don't know, well behaved the dogs are. They're used to this. Right? Yes. They're yes, prepared absolutely. For this. I think they feel the excitement and I actually think it makes most of them perform even better. They know they're with royalty. One at a time around. She's looking at how they go for their breed. It's not how fast they go, it's the way that they go. Do they keep their outline? Do they look like the same dog standing as they are moving? Do they look typical for their breed? Urbano certainly has a following. Yes. Beautiful coat. They're very popular here in New York City as well. Great apartment sized dog. It's Justin Smithy handling his Italian Greyhound. His wife showed the whippet in Hound Group. Right? That's right. Yeah. Who's next? Marcello with his Toy Manchester. Manchester. Moving beautifully. And Primrose. Pekingese. David takes her the right pace. Yeah. It's always important to go the right pace for your breed. Yeah. There's paws under there somewhere. <laughs> Bit of assistance. Esteban Farias, Biggie, very popular. He's moving beautifully tonight. That's like flawless. Diane now has Keegan. Again, a very seasoned, mm. seasoned winner. Gorgeous coat and color on that dog. Biggie repeat. Yeah. I mean, this is a wide variety. Crowd is really getting into this. Yeah. They're calling out oh, names. Looks like the, the Havanese. Havanese. Bono has been pulled out front. Biggie second. Wow. See if this is final. Then Keegan, the Yorkie. English toy. And spider. the English toy with pair. That is it. Havanese. The Havanese. The Havanese has it. <laughs> Number two is the Bono pump. being handled by Number Tabby McFadden. The only breed native to Cuba. And the winner of the toy group. So a Dachshund and a Havanese. Bono's won his national specialty. He won a group four at the AKC National Championship in Orlando. He's got a great I would just say his career, his, right, his, <laughs> his career is actually at the beginning, and uh, he's had some really great wins to start off the year, so right on track for him. You often, is there a slight advantage being owner or handler? Do you well, think? this is a professional handler. She's not the owner, uh, but she's. She actually breeds Havanese. Oh, she might be the owner handler of him. That's yeah. right. She does yeah, she breed the dogs. She yes. always yes. think of her as a professional all breed handler, but you're right. She does breed Havanese as well. So. A lot of our professional handlers are also breeders. That's correct. Yeah. 
But well, she I, has I, him in perfect condition. Look at that coat. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how the, our judge, Sharon Newcomb, could decide between, as you say, always tough decisions. Yeah. And let's check in again with Karen. <laughs> Congratulations to you, Taffy. The Havanese winning tonight. Why do you love showing this dog? I bred this dog and I own this dog. <laughs> so it's extra special for you. Now, as we know, your husband, Bill, won Best in Show last year. So how competitive are the two of you? It's team. Whoever brings it home, it's team. Okay, that's, well, that's a nice spirit for you to say. So now, how do you think uh, your chances are for Best in Show? Well, I'm one of seven. You certainly are. Well, best of luck to you. Congratulations on the victory already.